Sometimes in our daily discussions and conversations we listen to the word psycho. So are we really around those who fit this description? Psychiatrist Sally Thomas says that a psychopath suffers from a severe disorder that pushes him to commit crimes without feeling guilty, as he relishes when others are harmed and always follows the rule of the end justifying the means, which sometimes constitutes a path to success. So we may encounter people in our surroundings who have a prestigious social status and appear as good from the outside, but work to harm others in order to achieve their benefits without feeling guilty. The Mayo Clinic medical site explains that the antisocial personality suffers from a mental disorder in which the patient ignores the rights and feelings of others and does not show any feelings of regret for the wrong behaviors. While psychology today distinguishes between sociopath and psychopath, that the former may result from various factors in the environment such as troubled childhood, exposure to abuse and painful interpersonal relationships, while the second may be caused by a genetic defect or some brain injury at birth, the hostile character of people with hostile personality disorders is evident, and their desire to harm people and property is manifested and this can be diagnosed early at the age of 15. The psychopathic personality is characterized by manipulation. It can easily gain the trust of others, but it does not maintain strong ties with others. Its actions are often pre-planned, and the crimes it commits are often very organized and accurate. Ahmed Jamal, a psychiatrist at the Daumara Mental Health Hospital in Decalia, says that according to the American Classification, which is the International Statistical Classification of Diseases approved by the World Health Organization, the term antisocial can be applied to psychopathic patients, and that indifference to right and wrong, insistence on lying or deception to exploit others, and the use of intelligence or cunning to cheat others for personal gain or to bring absolute personal happiness, along with excessive selfishness, a sense of idealism and showmanship, and repeated violations of the law, are all symptoms it is suffered by psychopathic and sociopath sufferers. According to Jamal, Crime and Violence Sally Tauma says that there are several researches done on the brain, which found that the average person when watching scenes of bloody violence accelerates the heartbeat. But with psychopathic people it is different, they enjoy those scenes, which cause them comfort, and they enjoy scenes of violence and blood. So their treatment is more complex and needs longer time also due to the complexities in their personalities. According to the English National Health Service website, the NHS, people with antisocial personality disorder tend to commit harmful, scandalous, and sometimes criminal crimes, in addition to violating the physical and emotional rights of others, and failing to maintain friendships and social relationships for a long time and is described as one of the most difficult mental illnesses. According to an article in Psychology Today, 23% of award-winning films have their protagonists portrayed psychopathic or sociopathic characters, such as Michael Corleone's character Al Pacino in The Godfather's sequel. Dr. Ahmed Jamal believes that people with aggressive behaviors and those with an antisocial personality are well aware of the crimes they commit as the psychotic patient is the patient who can commit a crime such as murder, theft or rape without his consciousness or will. While the psychopathic patient or those with various disorders are well aware of the crimes they commit, and here they have to take legal responsibility, Jamal adds that a number of patients do not recognize their need for medical help in the first place, resort to defensive tricks to justify, and do not ask for help, and here treatment does not have a useful role. And even when placed in hospitals compulsorily, Treatment will not be feasible. Chained in cold blood. In advanced cases, the patient may feel pleasure when committing serial crimes, says Sally Tama, and it is possible that the owner of those crimes, whether it is the murder or rape of a successful person in his work or life, and believed to be doing an important job. In 2017, newspapers published a news about a serial killer, the murder of 82 women, and despite that he was a good father and husband, Mikhail Popkov, who carried out his crimes over two decades in a series of murders. It is the worst in the history of Russia, making it one of the most famous serial killers in the world. Popkov was a former policeman and admitted that his motive for these crimes was to clean the Siberian city of Angarsk from prostitutes and uncommitted women, as he described it. And prosecutors said the serial killer killed 82 victims in total, raping most of them before cutting them with knives or axes and screwdrivers. In her interview with The Platform, Thomas says that the psychopathic person commits crimes in cold blood, relishes in torturing his victim, 
and always holds others responsible. And there are relationships that fail because of those characters and goes beyond failure to be those relationships that cause the destruction of the other person. The psychopath can commit the crime of rape without a sense of guilt, but blames his victim and accuses her of being the cause and destroys them psychologically. And there are many relationships that end in destruction and failure because of that character. Successful Leaders In a report titled Can a Rude Personality Be a Successful Leader? The BBC published in 2017. One in five who hold positions on boards and senior positions in companies hide tendencies to social violence and cruelty, using certain personality traits to maintain their personal charm and make their way in the workplace. Psychologist Paul Papayak of New York, in his research, found that 4% of business leaders in the United States can be psychopaths with rude social behavior, meaning that you can meet a personality with those qualities in your workplace. Perhaps your direct boss or boss, with the research that has been conducted, the psychopath is no longer the image that he is the person who clearly practices the crude crime or the person who wipes his knife in the face of others. And other such scenes, people with aggressive tendencies can be successful at work. And we meet them on a daily basis. Lion Tin Brenke, a senior researcher at the study and assistant professor of psychology at the University of Denver, told the BBC that there is a difference between having power and managing it efficiently. After comparing the qualities of 101 people in power between 2005 and 2015, so that psychopathic personalities derive their powers through domination and intimidation, not through respect. Studies show that executives with high psychopathic qualities are personal charismatic, creative, and skilled at communication, but this fades away on behavioral issues. According to Papiak's research in 2010, and the journal Psychology Today shows that psychopaths may have a charming personality from the outside. And it is difficult to distinguish between lying and truth in talking to them. James Fallon, an American neurologist and geneticist, discovered by pure coincidence that he was a psychiatric patient with antisocial personality disorder in 2005. And while working on an Alzheimer's research, Fallon found that the brain anatomy of a member of his family is almost identical to the brain anatomy of psychiatric patients. And after tracing the identity of the owner of this autopsy he found that he belonged to him personally. And his author wrote about it a personal journey in neuroscience to look for the dark side of the brain. Business Insider published two pseudonymous stories of two characters who were able to live with the disease one of whom was raped by the brother of one of his friends at a young age, and the second whose parents noticed changes in him from a young age and a tendency to aggression towards others. And although their lives are different in terms of upbringing and conditions of the disease, one of which was infected by genetic genes and the other because of an accident at a young age, they agreed that they were able to appear in front of the surroundings as ordinary people who do not suffer from any problems or disorders. The first was helped by his father in treatment by entering a therapeutic institution while the second, who was raped as a child, ended up in prison for a crime of theft. And after entering prison he sought the treatment he received inside his prison from the prison doctor. Stigma or treatable disease The patient's admission that he has a problem is the first step to treating any disorder or psychological problems as explained by both Jamal and Thomas. And then comes the determination of the form of treatment, which varies from case to case between psychological sessions or prescription drugs carried out under the supervision of a doctor. And psychotherapy or dialogue therapy is sometimes used in the treatment of antisocial personality disorder, stigma, or the characterization of hostile or psychopathic personality as perpetrators of crimes is what makes them deny themselves according to Thomas, and deny it even in their own hearts for fear that they will be classified as dangerous people in society rejecting and living with it. And some of them continue to commit their crimes that may lead them to prison in the end. There are no drugs or medications specifically approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to treat antisocial personality disorder. And doctors may prescribe depression anxiety medications. And some medications are usually prescribed with caution because of the possibility that some may misuse them. They are used only under medical supervision. And the treatment occurs in the long term.